Hi, and welcome back to Epic Restorations. Today, we're getting into the rear hubs and drums on the 1930 Ford Model A chassis. While we were working away on our emergency brakes and brake shoes, George took the opportunity to examine our rear brake drums. Our wheel drums are steel, and unfortunately, it's all too common to find that these old steel drums are too worn and too thin to continue to use safely. Brand new, these steel drums have a wall thickness of 145 thousandths of an inch. Since ours were off, George measured them and found them to be just below the minimally safe thickness of 120 thousandths of an inch. We'd previously talked about making the switch to cast iron drums and decided that now would be as good a time as any to just go ahead and do it. We've got some work to do before we can get these new drums and hubs on the car. So, without any further ado, Let's get to the shop and let's get to work. In our last episode, we replaced the rear brake shoes on the Ford Model A. We also installed a new emergency brake assembly on the right rear side of the car, as we discovered that ours was missing. When we ordered these parts, and while we were at it, we also ordered new hubs and drums from Mike's Affordable. Mike set us up with some really nice cast iron hubs and drums, swedged the hub lug bolts in both sets of drums for us, turned them true, and arced our brake shoes to match the new set of drums. Today we're going to get started by cleaning up these drums and getting them ready for powder coating. Any oil, dirt, and grease needs to be removed prior to starting the powder coating process. Step one was to give the new hubs and drums a good cleaning with some brake cleaner. Once cleaned and dried, we baked the hubs and drums in our oven at 450 degrees for an hour to bake out any impurities. We ran both hubs and drums through the cycle and let them sit overnight to cool down. The next day, I went over them both again with wax and grease remover, just to be sure that they were absolutely clean and ready for powder. To keep the powder coating out of the hubs, we used a pair of high temperature silicone plugs. These plugs can take the heat of the oven and can be left in throughout the powder coating process. Using the wax and grease remover, a microfiber cloth, and a little elbow grease, I went to work cleaning each of the hubs and drums. With regards to the threads on the wheel studs, you really have two options. You can powder coat over them and then go back over the threads with a thread chaser, or you can use a high temperature polyester tape and wrap the threads on the lug bolts to protect them. We did one drum each way to demonstrate. With the hubs and drums clean and dry, it was time for powder coating. We went with a mirror black powder coat. Using our equipment, George went to work powder coating the first one. Using a hot flocking process, we coated the parts and put them in the oven to cure. Setting the electric oven to 400 degrees, we let the powder coating flow out and then let the parts cure for 20 minutes. Once cooked, we pulled out both rear hubs and drums to cool, and they looked perfect.
Once the parts were cool, it was time to install the bearings, grease seal, and retainer ring in both hubs. I began by greasing the bearing. Using the same red high temperature grease we've been using on the other parts of the car, we packed the bearings really well. Once the bearing was packed, we placed it into the hub and then installed the grease seal to keep the dirt out of the roller bearing. Finally, we attached the snap ring to hold the seal in place. Once complete, we did the same thing with the other rear hub and prepared to put them on the car. The final step was to place the axle key into place, slide the hub and drums on, and insert the fiber grease seal, flat washer, and axle nut onto the spindle. With the new cast iron drums and hubs on the car, we're confident that we've set a strong foundation on the back end of the car that will provide us with many miles of reliable performance. Join us next time as we finish up our work on the rear end of the car and continue our journey to restore this 1930 Ford Model A on the next episode of Epic Restorations.